Okay, we're continuing uh, the Apocalypse of Abraham with chapter 13, after he was told to bring the sacrifice on the mountain of God called Mount Horeb, where he was with the angel Jawel. Yes, Jawel. Okay, so chapter 13. I did everything commanded to me by the angel, and I gave the angels who had come to us divided animals, but the angel Jawel took the birds. Then I waited until the evening sacrifice, then and there an unclean bird flew down upon the carcasses and I drove it away. So like some sort of vulture was trying to eat them, which makes sense. The unclean bird spoke to me and said, Abraham, what are you doing upon these holy heights where no man eats or drinks and there is no food for men here, but these heavenly beings consume everything with fire and will burn you up? Forsake the man who is with you and run away, because if you ascend into the heights, they will destroy you. Maybe it was the devil once again trying to deceive him. Then, when I saw the bird speaking, speaking, I said to the angel, What is this, my lord? And he said, This is ungodliness. This is Azazel, the fallen angel, Azazel, who is to be bound under the earth, under a rocky desert. Okay, if you remember that from the book of Enoch. And he said to it, to the bird, Disgrace upon you, Azazel, for Abraham's portion is in heaven, but yours is upon the earth, because you have chosen this for the dwelling place of your uncleanness, and you have loved it. Therefore the eternal mighty Lord forced you to dwell upon the earth, and through your every evil spirit of lies, rage, and trials came forth the generations of ungodly men. He corrupted humanity with all kinds of things. God, the eternal and mighty one, has not permitted the bodies of the righteous to be in your hands, so that the life of the righteous and the destruction of the unclean may be assured. Listen, you have no permission to tempt the righteous at all. Leave this man. You cannot deceive him, because he is the enemy of you and those who follow you, and those who love what you want. Behold, the garment which is heaven was formerly yours, has been set aside for him. So the glory of the fallen angels, before they were fallen, is now going to be given to the good people. And the mortality which was his has been given over to you. Interesting. So the fallen angels became mortal. Chapter 14. And the angel said to me, Abraham, and I said, here I am. And the angel said to me, know that from now on and forever, the eternal one, God, has chosen you. Be bold. I command you to use this authority against him who reviles the truth. Will I not be able to revile him who has scattered about the earth the secrets of heaven and who has taken counsel against the mighty one? Say to him, may you stoke in the fires of the earth's furnace. Wow. Okay. Go, Azazel, into the desert, deserted parts of the earth. Your inheritance is over those who are with you, with the stars and with the men born by the clouds, whose reward you are. They exist. They exist. They exist because of you. Hate is your pious act. Therefore, you will destroy yourself and be gone from me. Wow, that is just wild, tough words. And I spoke the words that the angel taught me, but the angel said to me, Do not answer him, for God has given him power over those who answer him. When the devil speaks to you, do not answer the devil, because if you answer him, you start the conversation, you are going to have a hard time leaving. You're giving the devil power over you when you reply. He said here, do not answer him, for God has given him power over those who answer him. And the angel spoke to me again, saying, however much he speaks to you, do not answer him, so that he may not get to you easily. The, do not engage. The Eternal One gave him the gravity and the will do not answer him. I did what the angel commanded me, and whatever he said to me about the fall, I did not answer him, about the fallen one, the bad angel. Chapter 15 As the sun was setting, I beheld smoke like that of a furnace, 
And the angels who had the divided portion of the sacrifice came down from the top of the smoking furnace. And the angel lifted me with his right hand and set me upon the right wing of the pigeon, and he sat on the left wing of the turtle dove. Neither birds had been slaughtered. He flew me to the borders of the flaming fire. Okay, well... <laughs> They sat on the pigeon and on the turtle dove. So did they shrink and become really small? Or did those birds become really huge? I don't get it. Is this like Ant-Man version Abraham? You know what I'm saying? I need to stop trying to be logical, I guess. I don't know. <sighs> Neither birds had been slaughtered, so they flew them around. He flew me to the borders of the flaming fire. And we rose on many winds to the heavens, which were above the firmament, above the sky. Um, in the air, we ascended to a height that I could see a strong light impossible to describe. In the light of a fiercely burning fire, I saw many people, male in appearance. All of them were constantly changing their appearance and form. They were running as they were being changed, and they were worshiping and crying out with a sound of words that I could not recognize. That's, that sounds creepy. Chapter 16. And I said to the angel, why have you now brought me here? I can no longer see clearly and I am growing weak. My spirit is leaving me. And he said, remain close to me and do not fear. He, the one you cannot see, is coming toward us now with a tremendous voice of holiness. He is the eternal one who loves you, but you yourself cannot see him. But you may find your spirit growing faint on account of the choirs of those who cry out because I am with you to strengthen you. Chapter 17 While he was speaking, the fire coming towards us surrounded us, and there was a voice amidst the fire like a voice of many waters, like the sound of a violent sea. And I wanted to fall down and worship, and the angel knelt down with me and worshipped. However, the surface of the high place where we were standing, changed constantly, inclining, rolling high and low, and the angel said, Worship Abraham and sing the song which I now will teach you. Never stop singing it, sing it in continuous sing it continuously from beginning to end. And the song which you taught me to sing had words that were appropriate to the area of heaven we were standing in. Each area or sphere in heaven has its own song of praise and only those who live there know how to sing it and those on earth cannot know it or sing it. Hmm. They could know it only if they were taught by the messengers of heaven, so the angels. And the words of that song were of a type and meaning. So I bowed down, since there was no solid ground on which to prostrate myself, and I recited the song which he had taught me. And he said, recite it without stopping. And I recited, and he himself recited the song along with me. And this is the song. Eternal, mighty, holy God, El, God of unlimited power, self-originated, incorruptible, self-originated, incorruptible, immaculate, without beginning, without beginning, but self-originated, having no mother or father, spotless, immortal, self-created, illuminated with your own light, your own light, without mother or father, self-begotten, high, radiant, wise, lover of man, favorable, generous, bountiful, jealous over me, patient, most merciful, Eli, my God, eternal, mighty, holy Sabbath, most glorious, L L L L God Jawel Lord God 
You are he whom my soul has loved, the guardian, eternal, radiant, shining, made of light, voice of thunder, you appear as lightning, all seeing. You receive the prayers of those who honor you and turn away from the prayers of those who besiege you with their provoking ways. You redeem those who are in the midst of the unrighteous and those who are confused among the wicked, one who inhabited the world in the corruptible life. You renew the life of the righteous. Before the morning light shines, you make the light shine upon your creation from the light of your face in order to bring the day on the earth. But he is not the sun. And in your heavenly dwellings there is an, inexhaust an inexhaustible light of another kind, another kind of light in his homes. It is the inexpressible splendor from the lights of your face. Accept my prayer and let it be sweet to you, and also the sacrifice which you yourself made to yourself through me who searched for you. Receive me favorably and show to me and teach me and make known to your servant what you have promised me. <sighs> Now my throat hurts. Okay, that was chapter 17. We only have a couple of pages left. <clears throat> okay, chapter 18. While I was still reciting the song, without ceasing, of course, the mouth of the fire on the surface rose high in the air, and I heard a voice like a roaring sea. It was not stopped by even the plethora of fire, and as the fire rose up very high, I saw under the fire a throne of fire, and around it were many eyes watching. They were the all-seeing ones, and they were singing their song, the eyes around the throne. Under the throne were four radiant living ones, but they looked as if they were one creature, but each one had four faces. The cherubims, I think. The seraphims, the cherubims, I'm not sure. They are the angels that are around the throne of God in the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible. So under the throne were four radiant, radiant living ones singing. They looked as if they were one creature, but they were four. Okay. Each one had four faces. This is how they appeared and how they looked to me. Each one had the face of a lion, a man, an ox, and an eagle. And because of their four heads upon their bodies, they had 16 faces. <clears throat> okay, so, okay, that's something, that's different. So there are four creatures, four beings of some sort. And each one of them had four heads. And each head had four faces. So therefore each one of them had 16 faces. That's a bit creepy. I guess each face managed to face all different directions then. Okay. Alrighty. The all-seeing ones. <laughs> each one had three pairs of wings coming out of their shoulder, their sides, and their hips. So, top, middle, bottom, six wings, three pairs. With the wings from the shoulders, they covered their faces. With the wings from their hips, they covered their feet, their feet, yeah. So, with the two middle wings, they, those two middle wings were spread out and they were able to fly with them as if they were standing up. They weren't flying like birds, they were flying standing. Not like this, like this. Okay, as we know angels to be, or you know, you know. Okay, six pairs of wings. Then when they had ended their singing, they looked at one another and threatened one another. Then when the angel who was with me saw that they were threatening each other, he left me and went running to them he turned the face of each living creature from the face which was opposite to it so that they could not see each other's faces. And he taught them the song of peace which the Eternal One has in himself. And while I stood alone and watched, I saw a chariot with wheels of fire behind the living one. Behind the living ones, not God, those four creatures. So behind those creatures were about to fight, but now they didn't because the angel stopped them. It was a chariot with wheels of fire. Each wheel had eyes. 
turning around it, and it was full of eyes. Above the wheels was the throne which I had seen before. It was covered with fire, and the fire encircled it. There's a lot of fire going on. And in this an indescribable fire contained a mighty fiery host and I heard this holy voice like the voice of a man chapter 19 and a voice came to me out of the middle of the fire saying Abraham Abraham and I answered saying here I am and he said look at the wide places which are under the firmament on which you now stand Notice that no other place has yielded the one for whom you have searched or who has loved you. So he was looking for God and he's saying you didn't find God anywhere else. While he was still talking, the areas opened up. Below me were the heavens and I saw a fire which was widespread. There was a light which is the storehouse of life. There was the dew that God will use to awaken the dead, the spirits of the righteous, those that had gone on before, and the spirits of those souls who are yet to be born, judgment and righteousness, peace and blessing, an in, and an innumerable host of angels and the living ones, and the power of the invisible glory sat about the living ones, above them. All right. All of these were in the seventh firmament on which I stood. And I looked down from the high mountain on which I stood onto the sixth firmament. And there I saw a host of angels of pure spirit without bodies, whose duty was to carry out the commands of the fiery angels who were upon the seventh firmament as I was standing suspended over them and I looked down on the sixth firmament and there were no other powers of any form only the angels of pure spirit I was standing on its elevation and on this firmament there was nothing in any form and no other host but only the spiritual angels I saw a host on the seventh firmament and he commanded that the sixth firmament should be removed from my sight and I saw there on the fifth firmament the powers of the stars which carry out the commands laid upon them and the elements of the earth obeyed them chapter 20 and the eternal mighty one said to me Abraham Abraham and I said here I am and he said to me look at the stars which are beneath you and number them for me and tell me their numbers and I said, how can I? I am just a man of the dust of the earth. And he said to me, I will make your progeny a nation as large as the number of the stars and as powerful as the power of the stars. And I will set these people a section for me as my own inheritance. They will be distinct from those of Azazel, the fallen people. And yet I include Azazel in my house. And I said, Eternal and Mighty One, let your servant speak before you and do not let your fury ignite against your chosen one. Look, before you let me up, Azazel insulted me. Since he is now not before you, how can you establish yourself with them? Chapter 2 and 1. Then he said to me, Look, beneath your feet at the firmament and understand, look beneath your feet at the firmament and understand, okay? The creation represented and foretold in this expanse the creatures who exist in it and the ages prepared after it. So now he talks about the future. And I looked beneath my feet and beneath the sixth heaven and saw the earth and its fruits and what moved upon it and its beings that moved and the host of its men and the ungodliness of some of their souls and the righteous deeds of other souls. I saw the lower regions and the torment in the abyss. And I saw the sea and its islands, its monsters, the Leviathans, and its fishes, and Leviathan and his lair, 
his realms, the caves, and the world which lay above him, and his movements and the destructions he caused the world. I saw there the streams and rivers with their waters rising and their winding courses, and I saw there the Garden of Eden and its fruits, the source of the river that issues from it, the trees and their blossoms, and the man who did good deeds, and I saw in it, in the garden, their foods and their restfulness. And I saw there a tremendous multitude of men and women and children, half of them on the right side of the door, and half of them on the left side of the door. And that was chapter 21. Chapter 22. And I said, Eternal Mighty One, what is this vision of creation? And he said to me, This is my will for what is in the light and what it was good before my face. After this, I gave them a command, and by my word, and they came into existence. Whatever I had decreed was to exist that had already been decided, you know, and all things created, which you see, had stood in front of me before it was created. And I said, Lord, mighty and eternal, who are the people in this vision on this side and on that side? And he said to me, those who are on the left side are all those who existed before and after your day some destined for judgment and restoration, and others for vengeance and estrangement at the end of the age. Those on the right side of the vision are the people set a section for me. Those are the ones I have prepared to be born of your lineage and to be called my people. Some of these even come from Azazel. Okay, this is a lot of confusing details and the translation is a bit off and grammatically wrong sometimes. That's why you catch me like stumbling and trying to make sense of what I'm reading um, but he is seeing a vision and God is saying people are separated some to the left some to the right but he's saying the ones to the right are definitely God's people but some of these men some of these people even come from Azazel the fallen angel Chapter 23. Now look again in the vision and see who it is that seduced Eve and what the fruit of the tree was, and you will know what is to be, and how it will be for your progeny among the people at the end of the days of the age. Timing will bring, will come to an end. It started with creation and it ends at the end. And all that you cannot understand, I will make known to you, for you are well pleasing in my sight. And I will tell you of those things which are kept in my heart. Then I looked into the vision, and my eyes looked at the side of the Garden of Eden, and I saw there a man of imposing height, and he was great in stature, incomparable in appearance. He was embracing a woman who looked like his size and stature. They were standing under a tree of the Garden of Eden, and the fruit of this tree was like a bunch of grapes on a vine. Standing behind the tree was one who had the appearance of a serpent or a dragon, but he had the hands and feet of a man and he had wings on its shoulders. So a dragon or a serpent, he had hands and feet like a person, and he had wings. Quite something, isn't it? It's like one of those dragons from ancient times, if you look at the pictures and whatnot. They have hands and feet and they have wings and they look pretty fascinating. But they're not quite snake, they're dragons. There were six pairs of wings so that there were six wings on the right shoulder. And wow, that's a lot of wings. Six wings on the right shoulder and six on the left shoulder. As I continued looking, I saw the man and the woman eating the fruit from the tree, and the serpent, the dragon, was holding the grapes of the tree and feeding them to the two. I saw embracing each other. And I said, who are these two that embrace, and who is this between them? And what is the fruit which they are eating, almighty eternal one? And he said, 
this is the world of man this is humanity this is adam and that one who, who this one is adam the man and that one who is their desire upon the earth is eve the translation is so weird but he who is between them is the ungodliness of their behavior that is sending them on the way to perdition to to death it is azazel oh okay so if this were true very interesting so it's saying that the one who was the dragon with wings and whatnot was an angel of some sort and he was azazel the fallen angel who taught people to do a lot of things that caused them to sin and be violent to each other so azazel was the dragon the serpent and I said, Eternal Mighty One, why have you given the likes of him, the Azazel, the power to destroy mankind and their works upon the earth? And he said to me, I gave him power over them who want to do evil and those whom I have already hated, and they will even come to love him. And I said, Eternal Mighty One, why did you want to bring into existence an evil that men would desire in their hearts, since you are angered? at what was chosen by those who do useless things in your life. Chapter 24, he said to me, I am angered by mankind on your account and on account of those who will be of your family to come because as you can see in this vision, the burden of destiny is placed upon them and I will tell you what will be and how much will take place in the last days. Now look at everything in the vision. I looked and saw the created beings that had come into existence before me. And I saw Adam and Eve and the cunning adversary who was with them, the crafty Cain who had been influenced by the adversary, by the devil to break the law. And I saw the murdered Abel and the destruction brought on him that was caused through the lawless one. And I saw their fornication and those who desired it and its defilement and their jealousness and the fire of the corruption in the lower depths of the earth. And I saw theft and those who run after it, and the means and ways of their punishment at the judgment of the great court. And I saw naked men with their foreheads against each other, and their disgrace, and their passions which they had for each other, and their retribution. And I saw desire with capital D, and in her hand was the head of every kind of lawlessness, and her scorn and contempt and waste was assigned to destruction. <sighs> I'm so confused. Moving on. So he says a lot of sins that people commit, a lot of the evil. Okay, chapter 25. Then I saw something that looked like an idol. It was the idol of jealousy. It was carved in wood like father used to make. Its body was made of glittering bronze that covered the wood. And in front of it, I saw a man who was worshipping the idol. And in front of him, there was an altar. And upon the altar, a boy was killed as a sacrifice in the presence of the idol. Throughout history, people had sacrificed people and children to demons. It's horrible. And I said to him, what is this idol? And what is the altar? And who are those being sacrificed? And who is the one who performs the sacrifice? And what is the beautiful temple which I see? The beauty of your glory, like that which lies beneath your throne, they have that. And he said, here, Ab Abraham, the temple which you have seen, the altar and the works are my idea of the priesthood performing in the name of my glory where every prayer of men will enter and live, they include the praise of kings and prophets and whatever sacrifice I decree to be made for me. And he said, Abraham, listen, what you see is the temple. It is a copy of that which is in heavens. It is glorious in its appearance and beauty. I will give it to the sons of men to ordain a priesthood for my glorious name. In it, the prayers of men will be spoken and sacrifices offered. I have ordained this for your people. 
especially those who will arise out of your lineage. But the idol which you saw is the image of jealousy that will be set up by some of those who will come out of your own loins in later day. So Hebrews. And the man who sacrifices in murder is he who pollutes my temple. These are witnesses to the final judgment and their appointment, their reward has been set from the beginning of creation. Okay. Okay. Chapter 26. And I said, Eternal Mighty One, why did you establish it like this and then proclaim the knowledge of it? And he said to me, Listen, Abraham, and understand that what I am about to say to you and answer my question. Why did your father Terah not listen to you? And why did he not stop his idolatrous practices together with his entire house? And I said, the eternal mighty one, certainly because he did not want to obey me because I did not follow his works. And he said to me, the will of your father is in him and it's up to him. And your will is in you and it's up to you. And likewise, the counsel of my own will is within me and it's up to me. And it is prepared for the coming days before you have any knowledge of them or can see the future with your own eyes. Now look again into the vision and see how it will be with your children. Chapter 27. Okay, almost done. Chapter 27. And I looked and I saw the vision sway. From its left side, a crowd of unbelievers ran out and they captured the men, women, and children, and they murdered most of them, and others they kept as slaves. And I saw them run towards the slaves through four doors which were high with stairs, and they burned the temple with fire, and they took and broke the holy things that were in the temple. And I said, Eternal One, behold, my progeny, whom you have accepted, are robbed by these ungodly men. Some are killed, and others they enslave. The temple they have burned with fire and the beautiful things in it they have robbed and destroyed. If this is to be, why have you ripped my heart like this? And he said to me, Listen, Abraham, all that you have seen will happen because of your progeny, who will continually provoke me because of the idols that you saw, and because of the human sacrifices in the vision, through their drive and desire to do evil and their schemes in the temple. You saw it. And that is how it will be. And I said, Eternal Mighty One, allow these works of evil brought about by ungodliness pass by. And instead show me those who fulfill the commandments. Show me the works of righteousness. I know in truth you can do this. And he said to me, the days of the righteous will arrive and are seen symbolized by the lives of the righteous rulers who will arise in whom I have created to rule at the appointed times. But you must know that out of them will arise others who care only for their own interests. These are symbolized by those killers I have already shown you. <laughs>